All right, so now time for our super scary senior level shot. Now, if we zoom out and look at the entire script, it's a little scarier than I mentioned, but again, once we zoom in and see everything that's happening, it'll be kind of less scary. So let's go ahead and just start off with what a senior level shot is. So my definition of senior level shots, they're shots that require either advanced technical knowledge or a strong creative eye or both creative problem solving, and often the ability to develop new techniques and workflows. All right, so that's kind of a key thing to know about senior artists too. They have more knowledge and maybe a better eye, but they don't know how to do everything, but they have the confidence to know that when they see something they don't know exactly how to do, they're confident they can find a way to do it. Like for example, in this shot, when I filmed this and then reviewed it and I looked at like this frame, I didn't know exactly how I was gonna do it, okay? And I know this single frame here would make a junior compositor shit their pants but a senior compositor would look at this and say oh that'll be tough right so at the end of the day i did figure out how to get that frame done but it took some figuring out and i actually did develop some new techniques to do it or at least some techniques that i had never done before so looking at this shot and I guess we need to get the shot description. Okay, so the shot description is to replace the computer screen back here, replace the phone screen, and loop the end of the shot with the beginning. So as you can see, I bring my hand in, and then I throw the phone up, catch it, and at the end, I bring my hand out. So I wanna loop the ending with the beginning. And also when it comes to replacing the computer screen and the phone screen, and that's not as simple as a blue and green screen key, you can see there's also all this light in the scene that we have to replace. The light on my hand, the light through the phone, and on the walls and everything like that. Now, an important thing to understand, this simple throwing of the phone is what makes this shot a senior level shot. It doesn't just make the tracking advanced because it's a difficult track. It makes the keying difficult because of all this motion blur, the paint difficult, as you can see here. That was one of the steps down here. I had to get rid of those tracking markers on every single frame, and that was not fun. So sometimes a super difficult track can make every other aspect of your shot more complicated. I've literally gotten assigned shots before just because the track was really, really hard. So that's important to know. Being really good at tracking can really help you stand out as a junior compositor. And it's actually why it's the first section I cover in the 2D compositing fundamentals, because it's so, so important. So let's just go through piece by piece and see everything that I'm doing. Everything up here is just kind of prep work. So right here, I tracked the phone. And as you can see, it's pretty complicated. When we looked at that junior level shot example, which was similar to this one, I only needed one corner pin node to track it for the whole shot. Now I'm tracking multiple different sections of the shot with multiple different transformation nodes and multiple different tracker nodes, and I'm combining them all together. And there's even a lot of manual tracking, especially when I throw the phone in the air, that's all manual tracking. So I'll just play this for you. And as you can see, that phone throwing part is pretty crazy. So no tool in Nuke is actually gonna do that for you. They can maybe help you a little bit, but I pretty much tracked that entirely manually. So we're gonna show you manual tracking as well. Is that something you need to know how to do as a senior is what to do when your tools don't work. Your tools aren't always gonna be able to do everything for you, okay? That's really a kind of key characteristic of being an experienced artist is knowing what to do when your tools break. You can't just rely on tools for everything, all right? Here, did the same thing, but I tracked the monitor in the back, kind of a rough track. And here is where I did all the paint work to just get rid of the tracking markers on every single frame. So that was fun. So up here, we used the tracking markers to track the shot. And here is where we painted them all out because we didn't need them anymore. Now, if you want to talk about a difficult shot, that would be tracking this without tracking markers. And that also happens a lot in VFX. But because I filmed this myself, I didn't want to give myself that headache. All right, so here is the actual main comp. Up here is where I'm doing my phone, replacing that screen. And down here below is where I'm doing the monitor behind it. Now, interestingly enough, I'm kind of comping in the wrong order. You're usually supposed to composite what's in the back first, like whatever's farthest away from camera. And then as you get closer to camera, that stuff is near the bottom of your script. That's why your grain is usually the last thing you add to your shot. But yeah, just to quickly run through this. Here we've got our footage. Here we've got our phone screen, doing some color corrections and applying that track to it. It's 
pretty much as simple as that. It looks scary because the track is this big tree with all these different trackers in it. But as you can see, they're still basic nodes. They're still just basic transformation nodes. I teach you all of these in the image manipulation course. Now, the keying was really, really tricky. And so I'm gonna spare you that for now. I might show you some of this when we are in the keying section, but keying is a whole nother beast. And there's a lot to know when it comes to keying. But for the most part, I literally just used a key light node three times, that's it. And it's still just grade nodes, merge nodes set to different operations, blurs, rotos, transforms, all the same stuff. Like I said, 90% of, of all shots are made from the same nodes. And down here, I'm just doing the same exact thing that I did up here, but for the monitor. Taking this image, doing some color corrections, applying the track to it. And as you can see, I'm still doing that same edge extend trick. I actually did that on both of these. And that also helps me get rid of all that green lighting in here. So I'm basically adding the colors from here, extracting just our green light, and then replacing the green light with those colors. It's a very simple technique, but super, super powerful. Again, another thing we'll cover. And yeah, that's basically it. I was gonna do a loop here, but I ended up doing it down here instead. Now the loop is actually really cool to understand because that's gonna be a junior type shot example. I actually might assign this to you guys in the junior level shot section because it's just a split screen. You're basically taking two different pieces of footage and merging them together. It's a very common junior task that you'll have to do at a studio where they took two takes and they like an actor's performance in this take but another actor's performance in another one. So you have to combine them. It's called a split screen or a split comp, and it's really, really simple. So I'm literally just taking the beginning of the shot and matching it to the end like that. You can see I've transformed them so they kind of match. And then I take the hand from the beginning and just merge that back on top, kind of oversimplifying it. But at the end of the day, we get this. Pretty cool, I think. And uh, yeah, now that I think about it actually, I put this other shot back here of this other comp I did in the background. And I might as well show you guys that now because this is more of a technically challenging shot, not too artistic. It's pretty cool. The loop is cool. But this was a little fun shot I was doing just experimenting in Nuke with some 2D tricks. And so let me open that for you just so we can kind of see what an artistic senior level shot would look like in Nuke. Now this shot's really abstract. You probably wouldn't ever have to do something like this in Nuke, but it is a really cool testament to see what you can do in Nuke. All right, not gonna go through all this, but again, just using all the same nodes, like we've seen, noises, radials, blurs, rotos, masks, all that stuff. A lot of shuffle nodes as well, and grade nodes for color. And when we go to the bottom, we get this. And you can probably hear my PC, cause it's pretty heavy, but yeah. This was all generated inside of Nuke and it looks pretty cool. Now I was hesitant to show it because it's really just an image and I didn't make it very procedural. I might show this in the advanced sections when I, if I make this same setup and make it procedural, like make his eye dilate and stuff like that, that'd be pretty cool. But for now, I'll just leave it at this. So yeah, that's it for the senior level shots. There's a couple more shots I could show you, um, but we'll see them as we go on throughout the course. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to proceduralism. Mm -hmm.